Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today we're taking another look at the Ryzen 7 5700G. This thing has 8 cores, 16 threads, Zen 3, but we're not actually concerned with that today. We are overclocking this chip, but we're looking at the iGPU, those integrated Vega 8 graphics using the Wraith Stealth Cooler. Basically, I'm just curious to see how much additional headroom is in that GPU using the just stock cooler that comes with the CPU. So let's take a look at that. So the Ryzen 7 5700G, like I said, eight core, 16 threads, that's all great, fine and dandy, and that is fantastic for gaming. But the limiting factor on this CPU, or rather this APU's gaming performance is absolutely those Vega 8 graphics. Now out of the box, those Vega 8 graphics will run at 2000 megahertz, but if the Ryzen 5300G that I took a look at a little while back, which by the way, card above me somewhere, there is a little bit more headroom in this particular APU. Now before I jump into the actual overclocking of the integrated graphics on the 5700G, it is worth pointing out that with AMD APUs in general, they absolutely love fast memory speed. So the best way to get just better gaming performance out of these APUs is actually to start with overclocking the RAM as much as possible. Now, fortunately, with most modern kits of RAM on the uh, DDR4 side of things, you have built-in XMP profiles where it is very simple to get them loaded up and working in most cases. That being said, with this testing, my RAM is only running at at 3000 megahertz, but I'm not actually testing game performance just yet, though that is coming down the road where I pair this thing with some truly fast memory. So make sure you're subscribed down below so you don't miss more on that. So once you do actually get your memory overclock done and dialed in, that's when you can go on to overclocking the built-in graphics. Now, the way I'm doing it is really, really simple, and I'm sure I could milk out just a little bit more out of the GPU if I really fine-tuned absolutely every setting. But basically, the only two things I'm playing around with today are the actual GPU's core speed and the voltage going to that built-in GPU. And with all this, since we are using the base Wraith Stealth Cooler, the other consideration as I overclock this APU is also temperature, which, uh, a little bit of a spoiler, but it turns out temperature is not really a big deal with the built-in graphics on these APUs. So to kick off the testing, I started with 1.2 volts as my starting point for the voltage going to the integrated graphics. And I started those graphics at 2300 megahertz, which is already a nice little gain over the built-in base stock 2000 megahertz. And in heaven benchmark, yeah, it actually passed with flying colors. There was no artifacting of any kind, and it was just a smooth experience, just a super easy overclock. So I decided to push for more at that 1.2 volts. I went for 2400 megahertz, and that was a hard pass from the 5700G. However, we weren't quite finished. Since 1.2 volts didn't work, I went ahead and went for 1.3 volts. And it's at this point I should point out hardware info is at least showing the actual voltage a little bit lower than the voltage that I input in the UEFI. So that may be something to be aware of if you are overclocking a 5600 or a 5700G. However, it's also worth pointing out that difference between the voltage being reported and the voltage you put in the UEFI, that may vary by motherboard. So my particular motherboard is an MSI Gaming X B550. If you're using the identical motherboard I am, then great. If you're using a different motherboard, that's just something to keep an eye on. So at 1.3 volts at 2400 megahertz, it actually passed again with flying colors. And uh, once again, the temperatures were just fine. I did go ahead and try to go for 2450 megahertz. That was an absolute no-go. As soon as I loaded up Heaven Benchmark, I did see quite a bit of artifacting just like right from the get-go. And then when I knocked it back down to 2425 megahertz on the core clock at 1.3 volts, again, there was definitely some artifacting, so that was a no-go. So 2400 megahertz at 1.3 volts is kind of the limit of what my particular 5700G can manage. Now, that being said, I could absolutely bump up the voltage a little more and probably get 2425 megahertz or even 2450 megahertz 
pretty much stable, especially considering how much thermal headroom I have with this chip, but I didn't really want to push that much voltage through the integrated graphics. It just wasn't something I really wanted to do because as you continue to throw more and more voltage at it, you're seeing more and more diminished returns. It's just not that cycle that I wanted to get into. If I had enough cooling capacity, yeah, I could absolutely run this thing at a little bit higher clocks, but if you're just looking for a quick overclock that gives you a nice performance boost, getting up to about 2400 megahertz without really throwing a ton of extra voltage at it is actually a really nice way to go. So if we're considering the actual core clock speed of the integrated graphics, that's an extra 20% on the clock speed. That's a fantastic overclock if you're looking for a way to get just free gaming performance. And when you're considering how many AAA games can be running right around that 30 FPS number on a CPU like the 5700G, that could actually be the difference between having a very playable experience versus one that is just not good enough to really play through an entire title using this CPU. And I mentioned earlier that temperatures were just fine. Here is a quick graph of temperatures both at stock speeds as well as a couple of the overclock settings that I used. And basically the integrated graphics absolutely did not get overly hot. They're not pulling a ton of power. They're very low power graphics to begin with. So if you're concerned about overloading that Wraith Stealth cooler, you're not gonna be overloading it with the iGPU. Where you're gonna overload that cooler is if you hit it with something that's CPU heavy, which the good news with gaming is the iGPU is going to be your bottleneck. So the CPU in most titles is not really gonna be working all that hard because the GPU of these 5700Gs is just holding back the CPU side so much. Which then does mean in most cases, until you throw an actual GPU, like a dedicated GPU into one of these systems featuring a 5700G, there's really not a compelling reason to upgrade the Wraith Stealth Cooler. Unless you already have a cooler laying around, you don't really need to throw a bunch of extra money at a decent cooler, which to be fair, you can get a solid 20 or $30 cooler for these things, but you don't really need to spend that money unless you do CPU intensive tasks. And finally, the last takeaway I want to point out is just that if you get a 5600G or a 5700G, it is absolutely worth your while to go ahead and overclock those graphics because there is actually a fair bit of free performance just left on the table. And you may as well go ahead and get that free performance. It's well, it's free. So this is where I kick it back to you guys. If you own a 5600G or a 5700G, let us know in those comments down below. What kind of overclocks are you getting on the graphics? And of course, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.